I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com. This is another video in my series of videos about digital logic. And in this video, I'm going to talk about flip-flops. Flip-flops are an extension of latches. And uh, I'm going to start by building off of this D-latch here. Uh, with the D-latch, every time the clock is high, then the data, you know, whatever it might be from the D, let's say I just have a constant square wave coming in, even though I've drawn it as a wiggly line. Uh, it'll retain its previous state until the clock goes high, and then it'll follow whatever is going on on data. Then maybe here's where it's at, where the clock finishes up, and then it'll maintain its state when clock goes low. Well, this. Um, does provide a bit of memory for a digital system, but uh, we'd really like our data to be fully synchronous. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make it with a flip-flop so it only happens on the rising edge or on the falling edge of the clock line. So let's take a look at how we can modify the D-latch into a D-flip-flop. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ditch the input circuit here. And what was formerly called uh, enable is going to become our clock line. I'm going to bring that out here. All right. And then uh, the inputs here are just going to go to another D latch, which I'm going to stick here. So we have the uh, little bit that maintains the memory. And then we have the gates that enable the signal to get through or disable it. And this comes down and connects up with that clock there. But to make this work, we actually have to stick in an inverter. All right. And so that connects up up there. And um, we have another inverter here. And here's our D. And these guys switch positions. So Q is up here, Q bar is down there. And so now uh, this is a D flip flop that latches its data on the falling edge of the clock. And if we wanted to make this a rising edge, we could go like that. So this is a fairly simple to follow circuit. And just like all of the rest of the ones that I'm going to show tonight, there's many ways to design it. Uh, I'm going to show you one just to show that it can be done. Uh, but uh, keep in mind that there are many other ways to make these circuits. Uh, this is how apparently a D flip flop is commonly implemented. And what we end up having is a bunch of SR latches. Uh, we have three of them actually. And the beauty of this circuit is that where here we have eight NAND gates, in this one we have six. And here we have two inverters or three. In this one, we don't have any. So we've cross couple them to make the SR latch. This one connects over here. This one connects here. Here is our D input. All right, we have our clock, which comes to here. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to modify this gate into a three input NAND. We're going to pull from over to here, or from over there. And then finally, this NAND needs another input. And we're going to take the output of this NAND gate, which I'm just going to connect to over here, and bring it up. 
And so that is another way that not only is faster because there's fewer gate delays, but it also uh, uses less silicon. And this is Q and this is Q bar. And this is a rising edge uh, NAND gate, or rising edge D flip flop. All right. So there are two other common kinds of flip flops that are used. And uh, the first one that I'm going to show you is called the JK flip flop. And I don't know why it's J and K, but that's what it is. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out that inverter. And this becomes my K. And this one becomes my J inputs. And just for simplicity, let's take that one out of here. All right. Then uh, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to tap in and cross couple of things so that these become three input NAND gates. And they're attaching here. So essentially, this one is connecting to the output of that one, and this one is connecting to the output of that one. And so that creates a JK flip flop. And um, just to back up a little bit, the D flip flop, if the D input is a zero on the next rising or falling edge, whichever, whichever type it is, the Q will become zero. And if D is a one on the next edge, uh, it will become a one, whichever edge that is, whether it's rising or falling. Uh, for a JK flip-flop, it's a little bit different. So if you remember from the SR latch using, uh, I believe it was NOR gates, um, what we had was the um, state table was like this, S, R, and uh, this is Q, and this is Q bar. And we had 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And this was no change. And Q became 0. Q bar became 1. And then this one was semi-invalid. With nor, it became 0 and 0. Uh, but you should probably consider that invalid in your circuits just to make it safe. Because uh, if you were to transition from this state to this state, you don't know which way the output's going to end up. With the JK, it's very much like the SR, except that it's fully synchronous, so it only happens on one clock edge. And uh, this, the state table is the same way. So on, on that clock edge, the output becomes no change for 0, 0. And Q follows J, so if they're opposite in polarity, you have, uh, it just works out like this. And then if uh, they are both one, what you get is a toggle. And what that means is if I put one and one here and my clock edge comes, whatever was here flips. So now if this was zero and this is one, then it becomes 1 and 0, like that. And as long as I keep those guys high, every time that clock edge comes, they flip. OK? And so now I'm going to talk about the T flip-flop. And you can think of the T flip-flop as just a JK, where they've taken the inputs and connected them together like that. So now every time say that rising edge comes along, I think this this would be a falling edge one. Uh, but okay, so every time the falling edge comes, then if T is high, the output swap. And if T is low, they stay the same. So that is your T flip-flop. So that does it for the three most common types of flip-flops that are used. 
if you enjoyed this video, take a look at my other uh, videos on my YouTube channel. For RobotBrigade.com, I'm Jack Buffington.